You know, most gardeners think of weeds as the enemy, those persistent, pesky plants we pull up over and over again, only to see them return with a vengeance. But what if we've been looking at them all wrong? What if weeds aren't actually the problem, but the symptom? Welcome to a new way of thinking about your garden, brought to you by Soil and Crop Central. In this deep dive guide, we'll uncover the real message behind 15 of the most common weeds you're likely to find in your backyard. Each of these plants is a living, growing indicator of what's happening in your soil. Whether it's compacted, acidic, depleted of nutrients, or poorly drained, your weeds know it, and they're trying to tell you. The secret to thriving plants isn't just sun and water, it's soil health. And to understand that health, you need to listen to the weeds. This guy doesn't just name them, it decodes them. No fluff, no gardening myths, just actionable knowledge you can use to transform your garden from the ground up. The secret to thriving plants isn't just sun and water, it's soil health. And to understand that health, you need to listen to the weeds. This guy doesn't just name them, it decodes them. No fluff, no gardening myths, just actionable knowledge you can use to transform your garden from the ground up. Okay, so let's start reading the soil by observing the weeds already speaking to you. Dandelion tells you your soil is compacted and lacking calcium. If dandelions are showing up in your garden or lawn, the soil beneath them is trying to breathe. Dandelions thrive in compacted ground where air and water struggle to penetrate. The deep taproot of this plant isn't just about survival, it's nature's way of loosening hardpan. They also suggest a calcium imbalance. Their growth often corresponds with high potassium and low calcium levels, signaling a need to rebalance your nutrients and physically open up the soil. Plantain means poor drainage and hard-packed ground. Broadleaf and narrowleaf plantain both thrive in wet, compacted, and heavily trafficked areas. Their fibrous roots are designed to tolerate and even thrive in soggy soils that most crops hate. When you see plantain creeping in, your soil is likely anaerobic, lacking oxygen, and suffocating your plant roots. Improving drainage and increasing organic matter will shift the balance. Chickweed points to nitrogen-rich, moist soil. Chickweed is soft, sprawling, and honestly surprisingly informative. It favors rich, biologically active soil with moderate acidity and consistent moisture. If you're seeing chickweed early in spring or fall, your soil is fertile. But perhaps, you know, maybe a little too fertile. It may also mean your watering is excessive or your nitrogen levels are out of balance. While not a bad sign, chickweed is a hint to dial back fertilization or water scheduling. Purslane warns of dry, nutrient-depleted zones. Purslane doesn't just survive in poor soil, it thrives there. If you find this succulent-like weed covering your garden beds, it's a red flag that your soil lacks organic matter and water retention. Purslane often dominates when microbial life is low and competition is weak. The fix is to rebuild your soil's biological activity through compost and consistent deep watering. Dry, sandy soil loves purslane, your crops don't. Sorrel reveals that your soil is too acidic. Red sorrel or sheep sorrel isn't shy. If you see it spreading, your soil's pH has likely dropped below 5.5. This weed is a classic sign of prolonged acidity and nutrient lockout. Crops struggle to thrive in this condition. You'll need to correct the pH by applying agricultural lime, typically 40 pounds per 1,000 square feet, then water it in with about 1 inch of water per 5 square feet. Sorrel's presence is one of the clearest signs it's time to rebalance your soil chemistry. Crabgrass signals soil compaction and calcium deficiency. You know, crabgrass is more than just a summertime nuisance. Its presence almost always means your soil is compacted, shallow in organic matter, and low in calcium. It often shows up after synthetic fertilizers have skewed the potassium to calcium balance. Aerating your soil and adding compost is essential. And to correct nutrient imbalance, apply gypsum, calcium sulfate, at about 20 pounds per 1,000 square feet and irrigate thoroughly. Clover indicates nitrogen-starved soil. At first glance, clover might not seem like a weed. In fact, it's often used as a cover crop because of its ability to fix nitrogen from the air and return it to the soil. 
but if clover shows up uninvited your soil is probably low in available nitrogen. The plant is really just trying to correct this on its own. So, rather than fight clover, consider letting it grow in between your crops, or add well-balanced compost to naturally bring nitrogen levels back up. Lamb's quarter shows too much nitrogen and possible fertilizer overload. If lamb's quarters is thriving in your soil, there's a good chance you've applied too much nitrogen-rich fertilizer or manure. This weed takes advantage of nitrogen excesses and can grow faster than many crops. To fix the imbalance, increase carbon in the soil. Add straw, dried leaves, or wood chips about 2 to 3 inches deep to rebalance the carbon to nitrogen ratio. And avoid high nitrogen amendments for a season and focus on carbon-heavy compost instead. Knotweed means severe compaction and nutrient collapse. When knotweed shows up, your soil structure has hit rock bottom. It favors driveways, pathways, and bare areas with no fertility and intense compaction. If you're seeing knotweed in your garden beds, it's a warning that your soil has lost its ability to support plant life. The fix is not just adding compost, it's structural repair. Aerate deeply with a broad fork and apply compost blended with gypsum at a 1 to 1 ratio. Water deeply and mulch heavily. Thistle reveals acidic, low-fertility soil. Thistles have spiny defenses and deep roots that help them colonize acidic, disturbed, and undernourished soils. When they show up, your pH is likely below 6, and your fertility is too poor to support desired crops. Apply agricultural lime as mentioned earlier to rebalance pH, then rebuild fertility slowly with composted manure, avoiding synthetic nitrogen sources. Spurge shows up in dry, neglected soil. Spurge is another low-profile weed that thrives in poor conditions. Its appearance is often linked to dry, compacted soils with low biological activity. You'll often find it in cracks and between pavers, but if it's in your garden, your soil needs life. The first step is to reintroduce biology. Soak the area with compost tea, mix one part compost with five parts water, let sit for three days, then strain and apply one gallon per 10 square feet. Cover with mulch and keep it moist. So velvet leaf thrives in high nitrogen environments. It's honestly a classic sign of over-fertilization or, you know, over-manured land. Velvet leaf grows tall and fast in high nitrate soils and, well, it'll quickly compete with your crops for light and space. Like lamb's quarters, it suggests there's an imbalance, maybe just too much of a good thing. To fix this, try applying shredded straw or bark mulch to kind of reduce the available nitrogen and maybe skip the high nitrogen inputs for a season. Focus on building fungal-rich compost to help restore some equilibrium. Foxtail, on the other hand, really takes hold when potassium is high and calcium is low. It's another nutrient imbalance indicator, usually from using too much synthetic fertilizer. You'll often see foxtail after years of applying those high-potassium NPK blends without adding back calcium or honestly any organic matter. To correct this, go ahead and apply gypsum at about 20 pounds per 1,000 square feet and add leaf mold or finished compost to restore some balance. Also, it's a good idea to avoid potassium-heavy feeds until you start seeing some changes. Creeping Charlie, well it really dominates shaded, moist soil. It spreads pretty quickly in areas with lots of shade, high moisture, and organic matter. Now it doesn't necessarily mean your soil health is poor, but it does point to a structural imbalance. Shade-loving weeds like this can easily outcompete your vegetables if the canopy is too dense or if airflow is, you know, limited. To deal with it, improve light access and airflow by thinning out overhead plants and maybe switch to crops that are better adapted to shade. Honestly, it's a sign your garden layout might need a little adjusting. So, Nutsedge is basically telling you that your soil is just too wet. Yellow Nutsedge really thrives where there's poor drainage and the ground stays wet all the time. It's not pointing to any fertility problems but rather to structural issues in your yard. You'll often spot it in those low spots, around downspouts, or after those heavy rains. The best fix is usually to regrade the area or add some drain lines. But hey, if that's just not doable, you could try growing water-loving crops there, or maybe even build some raised beds. Just a heads up, mulching heavily won't stop nutsedge by itself since what you really need is a physical change to how the water flows. Turn your weeds into soil intelligence. You know, weeds aren't random. 
They're actually incredibly specific in what they tell you. The moment you learn to read them, your entire relationship with your garden changes. You stop guessing and start responding. Your fertilization becomes smarter. Your irrigation becomes more targeted. Your composting becomes more strategic. You're no longer gardening blind. When you can walk through your plot, see a patch of sorrel, and know instantly your pH is off, you're gardening like a pro. When you spot lamb's quarters and step back from nitrogen-heavy feeds, you're working with the soil, not against it. That's the goal here at Soil and Crop Central, to help you read the land, listen to it, and grow with it. Now it's your turn. Take 20 minutes today to walk through your garden. Look closely at what weeds are growing, and refer back to this guide. Start building a soil improvement plan based not on guesswork, but on what your plants, both wanted and unwanted, are telling you. If you learned something today, subscribe to Soil and Crop Central right now. Share this video with a fellow gardener who's tired of fighting weeds and ready to start learning from them. And if there's a strange weed in your yard you can't identify, leave a comment or snap a photo and tag us. We'll help you decode it because the more you understand your weeds, the better your soil and your harvest will be. Let the weeds speak. You just have to start listening.